Well, I've decided to bother the neighbors for a little while, so I don't know what's going to come out of me. I've been just been talking about the Hiawatha Comet and the Colburn Bible because I think there is clear evidence that we have dated history to 12,800 now. That we have written documentation of our memory of it, written documents concerning it, more than the Bible has ever, the original Bible. The Colburn is not a Bible, it's, it's a collection of things that has co covers some biblical related material. But is nothing is not the same concept as the Bible. It just means the book. Actually, is all the Bible. That's what word means. But I'm just going to shut up about it and play music because my mind's been buzzing on it for a while. I almost felt like smoking another joint. But that would take too much time, and then I'd forget to do this and wind up being hungry and so on. So. <laughs>
started playing that, I, I thought I was going to play a song of mine called Interstate 90, which I haven't tried in a long time, which needs more words, but that turned out to be the Wet'suwet'en War, about the Wet'suwet'en War at Burns Lake. So, uh, while the Bulkley gently flows, I guess that's the name of the song, one line came to me, the Bulkley Valley being the river, the valley, river, valley, where the Morristown Bridge is, the Morris River Bridge is, I think it is, Maurice. Adrien Gabriel Maurice was the missionary in the area who wrote the history of the Northwest of British Columbia, also in French, which, you know, he's a Catholic and he says what he says, but it's, you know, a lot of them are serious Catholics, although I'd say Frida Houston probably isn't. A lot of them that went through the residential school system are no longer Catholic, the same way that there's lapsed Jews, that after the, after the Holocaust, that there's no, there's a lot of secular Jews. So there's a lot of like non, non-Catholic, Catholic born kids around the First Nations community, and Anglican and everything else, all the ways that people buggered them and did the horrible things to them that they did. And that has to be remembered about each and every single first person that you see, that either they or their parents, 99% chance, had abominations performed upon them by priests and nuns, or were beaten for speaking their language. And people go, oh, they want more money? Oh, yeah, well, how many billions in dollars came out of the Wet'suwet'en country and the, Gik the lands of the Gitkasuan was Confeder Confederacy? Let's talk about reparations, shall we? Let's not just talk about treaty settlements. Let's talk about reparations, not just for the personal and moral damages that were done to us as children, which Canada has yet to atone for by doing more than apologize. And the RCMP are a big question in the murdered and missing murdered Indians woman issue. And as I said in my video, and they're leading the charge into, into the Innistoten Bridge with against the Innistoten and the get, get them done, you know, of the, of the hereditary chiefs of Wet'suwet, who are an ancient confederacy that are older than Canada, and here the crown has no treaties. So that's what that song was about. It's about the war in the Bulkley today that was launched today. This is the new Oka, and it's being kept from the world unless I can fucking help it. You know, so I'm, so I'm going to, in my other video, I'm going to translate Ask my Russian and other people that I speak Spanish or French. I can do one in French pretty quick after this. For France, as well as for Quebec and Acadia. To say the Acadians will all know. If they hear if they, any of the Acadians, I know what they, most of the most Acadians speak English. We're in a rough country. We live in a rough country. It's an ugly country. I love my country. I love the land. I love the land. I love the native peoples. I love I love all of all the people of Canada, except the ones that are ignorant assholes. We think that all the rest of them should roll over and play dead when they get stolen from. And oh, we raped you as children, too bad. We got the land now, boo hoo hoo. Well, you just want more welfare. That's the kind of rhetoric I'm lying and the kind of rhetoric that the Vancouver Sun tolerates, which the, never, the paper never used to tolerate material like that until the 1983 strike when they come back on and all of a sudden the province was tabloid and both them and the province started publishing hate letters as letters to the editors. They've never allowed them before that, the radical letters hate letters. So the old Pacific Press was a different establishment and has changed hands many times since through Can West Global and whoever else and now it's a New York hedge fund that owns a Napo chain which is pretty much being run still by Conrad Black who never should have been let back in the country. So I live in a country that's a farce. The Dominion of Canada is a farce. There is no treaty rights in the unsurrendered territories. I feel like doing that in French but that's what I was playing about. That was kind of the wistfulness of it and then you know it turned into this powerful driving kind of war, the beats of war was what was coming out on me, the beat of war that's happening up there right now. And I did that, I played that for the Wet'suwet'en people at the blockade. That there are people, there are British Columbians who stand with the Wet'suwet'en, like we stood with the Mohawks and we stood with the, the Slatley and whether it was at Mount Curry or at, because of the Kayish Resort in Alvin Creek or, or various blockades in that country or anywhere in BC. You know, there's a lot of Canadians, British Canadians have always supported the native point of view ever since you asserted yourselves. And we found, we all found out, especially us immigrants, you know, because I'm from an immigrant family, especially immigrant to BC. And both my parents were decent people, you know, and they would be, they mom, I know my mom was horrified by the, by the residential school things. And she quit working at, the, at St. Michael's at a late baby because she didn't like the way the girls were treated. She wouldn't say anything more about it. My own family was touched by it, and I'm white, you know. But be that this the case, this is anybody who's listening to my video. I'm just playing for music. But you, all you people who listen to my music worldwide, wherever you might be in whatever country, please tell your friends that this Indian there's an Indian war in British Columbia right now, and the Canadian media will not report on it honestly. So look up the Aboriginal People's Television Network and whatever sites I might post on Facebook. 
Oh, shut up. Now I'm going to play some more music. I don't know what. <laughs> having a truck and then a dog I don't know there are an older version of that song I'm going to have to tag other ones I need better left hand to play the blues well that's a minimalist blues a little bit different than I played before just e E7 and E7 lazy man's work but I'm just a rhythm guy so anyways play something pretty Michael play something pretty and shut up now to have some water You don't have to rock and roll all the time, Michael. It always turns into rock and roll, though. <laughs> Thank you. 
that used to be called Rodeo Sparkle. I don't know what that's called now, but it's been happening lately. I split it all like I do, and the words just start flowing. Because I used to go yada, 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 including in Norwegian and French, you know. I don't even speak leather language all that well, but I was singing to them too, because, you know, by and large, people don't want to listen to word lyrics. But when I start singing serious lyrics, and everybody doesn't want to sing, well, why are you singing about your dog or your lover or something like that? Well, I do those too. But those stuff like that just kind of tends to come out, right? But, or finding a job, which is what we're, we're, we're looking for an angel is about, or started out being. And this end of the world song is like, when angels fall and uh, and stared into the sun, I guess is one, or time is deeping is certainly one, or has been certain forms of it. And fireball is very much an end of the world song. And the other ones are escape the songs. And I don't know, my songs about not being able to go to the United States, Bourbon Street. But I still like Bourbon Street. I was almost started playing it there. Uh, but it's hard to tell that tale anymore because that's old now. You know, it was 10 years ago, me leaving my place in Burnaby, hitting the road with my guitar and some bags. So that's who I am. I traveled the world for a while. And my friend BC Mary got me vlogging back in BC, blogging back into the BC Rail scandal with her because she liked what I was saying. And I was living in Halifax. I had nothing to do in the snow other than go play music. So I played probably more politics than I played music back in Halifax and I didn't do as many open mics as I might have. But I find like open mics problematic because of the way I play and what people expected a Canadian open mic and I, I wasn't able to, to do the whiskey a go-go when I chat. I had told the story in another video that I won't retell it here in LA when I might have. And uh, I have a DJ friend in New York, even though it's not his kind of music, he's a surf DJ on Steady Freddy. And Freddie, you know, if I could come to the States, he could sell me out if I went to New York. You know, and the Americans like what I do, and Europeans like what I do, and Asians like what I do. The only place I get shit for it is in Canada. By the people who think they're cool. Because always oh, an old man, or he's a hippie, or whatever. Everybody here has a put down. The wet blanket in Canada is noxious. So that's why my Patreon grant, I'm going to mention that right now before I get back to playing. It's kind of double-edged, right? One is to be a musician full-time, write my operas, play my muscles on the great altars and travel the world doing archaeology and playing music and composing. And the other one is talking about history and politics and science so that it all makes sense for the young people. And to put down the record, the alternative record of, the alternative, not wrong, the alternative real record of the events of the past and of the current situation and things like the British Columbia confrontation over the, and I said only a few weeks ago that the unsurrendered territories, the, re, the geopolitical reality of a whole region of the province not voting at all and the referendum was about to be borne out and sure enough what's happening today we have a police that we call it a police action. It's a paramilitary and military action against the First Nations. So where did the military come from? Edmonton, I'm supposing. Etowawa? Where did they fly in from? What kind of military? Where were they brought back from? Were they combat military? What kind of military were they? Who were they? Who's in charge of the of E Division up there? And was it Horgan or, or Trudeau that ordered this? You see, all Canadians should be asking these questions and our media should be asking these questions, but our media are part of the corporate industrial complex which serves the Crown and the Crown serves it. And then he was used to justify the Crown in British Columbia. And the Crown protects the rights of the liberal capitalists, as they call themselves in the old days, liberal, small l, meaning liberal free enterprise. They mean, you know, and he's, oh, no, no, it's barred bullshit and taking the land and raping it and not giving the natives for what they wanted because the natives don't exist because they're not Christians. So somewhere back at quite a while ago, I'd mentioned, I'd mentioned, I'd mentioned Christians uh, in terms of Christianity still being a murderous religion. Well, I'll tell you what, all those guys in the Mounties up there and all those military guys, a lot of them are Christian. They go to church, they might go to church. They were certainly baptized Christian, most of them, especially the French, the French guys, probably baptized Catholic, even though they're not practitioners. I don't see how you could be a practicing Catholic and be a cop. Actually, myself, I can't see, but then I can't see how a Catholic priest could be like that. I understand why in, in Orthodox priesthood, there isn't the same, the same problem with boy fucking as there is in the Catholic priesthood. But I mean, this is the nature of, we don't have unit culture anymore. We don't have castrati anymore, you know, which was the whole bureaucracy in the old days because they didn't leave heirs. And that was the whole point of why gays rise so high in the hierarchy. It's the same reason that the that the, uh, the the eunuchs once did in the imperial hierarchies, uh, whether it was Byzantine or Ottoman or Roman, whoever it was, Persians, you know, they rose high in the imperial hierarchies because they didn't leave heirs. And they were all technically slaves. What powerful slaves would come become generals. Belisarius was a eunuch. He was a famous Ottoman admiral who was a eunuch. Um, but yeah, so 
you have you have a you have a Christian army going on an assault against a medieval First Nation. I'm going to have to ask Terry when what the what the date on this foundation of the Gitka Sandwich Suit and Confederacy was. I think it's in the 1600s, so that's not quite medieval, but it's definitely early modern world that they are. No, three, four hundred. Let me think now. Maybe it is medieval. Four, sixteen hundreds actually Renaissance. But in terms of era, you know, this is this is the Canadian army is going to war against a medieval confederacy, like Iceland or the Swiss Republic is was before it became official under the United Netherlands. It's invading it with an army in a place that has no actual legal right to be there. So I hope by the end of the day tomorrow there's a UN resolution censoring Canada for this and better be like I say I'm not a lawyer I said on my other video I'm not a lawyer I'm not a lawyer perhaps I should have been for reasons I didn't go to a good private school to go in that direction that's a whole story in its own play some more music Mike and stop talking about yourself beginning to get a cold from smoking too much pot. Also stupid. So up in the canyon and put the patch on and go herbal and just try and smoke straight pot with her flower mix. We got some vegetable gardens. I had a really nice meal tonight made out of leeks and nuts and tomatoes and uh, we had some green peppers and jalapenos, onions and some spices and stewed it up for a while. It's pretty good. Took a lot of chewing because I've only got so many teeth. And I think I'm, I was thinking I should get myself some to puree nuts with so I can have like a nut purees when I get my nuts, you know, so, so to speak, I'll puree them so I can put them in stuff so I don't have to worry about my protein levels because I like nut protein as opposed to pea protein, but I will grow a raft of peas in the organic garden because they're good protein. Anyways, I have to learn to eat vegetarian and learn about Alpithagorosate and Heraclitusate, you know, and the theosophy that goes with it, you know, that goes with the whole vegetarian in the classical world because I guess I've... I'm a disciple of Haran and the Punic culture that came out of Haran. I realize now that Punic civilization is rooted in Gobekli Tepe and Haran and the Temple of the Seven Planets and so on. It's all in that same area and the Tyre and Sidon and all those star voyaging Phoenicians with their ancient knowledge. They are the ancient knowledge, you know. And they're the survivors of what was what was the seas that came up in 6000 BC. They are the survivors and they mastered the seas. And I'm sure they visited North America just like they visited the Canaries and, and, and the British Isles. And so much of our history we're just beginning to realize now that it was all it was all real. All the legends, all the stories are all real in some way. And the ancient books that people think are oh, there's only the Bible that counts. Oh come on, give me a break. Only Son of God ever? Oh Jesus, I could start naming forty off the top of my hand, starting with Alexander and Theseus. It's a long list. Marduk. Jesus, it's a long list, you know. Uh, of sons of God, you know, that came to, to help mankind. So, you know, and help same in the, their avatars, you know, the avatars of, of Hinduism. We had Western Hinduism until Christianity took over and censored the past and erased the past. And it erases other cultures to this day as this way of extracting resources from them and turning the people into chattel by doing horrible things to them as children and then coming in and taking all the trees and now wanting to build a pipeline that they don't want and they're standing it off and the troops are standing up to it. I hate being Canadian at this point. I hate it during Oka. We don't have News World now. The media has shut, been shut off and isolated from Burns Lake. It's a shithole country. It really is a shithole country to treat people like that. And what shithole is the rest of the country, the rest of the world thinks Canada is a nice country? Oh, God, no. God, no, just look at Burns Lake and Smithers right now. Sure, they talk nice, but they're carrying a very big stick and they don't even have a right to be on the property of British Columbia, much less on the territory of the Wet'suwet'en Confederacy. And the, the Premier has no license to have hired the E-Division for that territory anyway. That area never voted to join Canada. They never signed the plebiscite that wiped away their rights, did they? Or were there 20 Britons in the Skeena? Were there any at all in the Bulkley? When that plebiscite happened that wiped out their, BC says it wiped out their rights, it wiped out the Royal Proclamation, and who said that? Which monarch said that? Did, Royal, did George say that this could be wiped out by act of the British Columbia uh, legislature signing things over to Canada? No, that did not get saved at all by George III. And all that land, including a lot of the Wet'suwet'en territory, I don't know the name of the timber supplier that is, um, uh, Babine or something like that, or Spokely maybe, timber supply, TSA we call them, 
all of that, like my own area, the Yalakum TSA and the Sioux TSA, which is which is the Whistler area and and the Pemberton Valley, and there's all these all over the province. These were all government reserve until 1976, when the provincial government gave it to the Forest Corporation, the largest company being Macmillan Bodell, the CP's arm, CP's forestry arm, for having funded his election the year before. So all that land had been set aside for settlement of land claims because of the impasse between Ottawa and BC by Ottawa and BC using BC legislation in the 1890s, I think by, by Premier Turner. I have to look into that exactly when it happened and who did it. Uh, but that was BC's position that they had. So these people didn't even vote on joining Canada that took their rights away from them and then took them all. And I don't want to get graphic about what was done to them, but they were all raped as children or their parents were, or they were beaten. Their land was taken from them and untold millions of timber was brought out of that area. I don't know all about all the minerals at Grand Island, all the other mines in the terrace. Well, terrace is in well, Timshan territory. Uh, but uh, the other mines in Gixan territory. And now there's, you know, huge industrial projects all through that sector of the province, tons of union jobs, the Amanoka Resource Corridor, the road, uh, private road into Tute Lake, but from the, from the few hundred miles from the, from the Prince George end, that's the only way to get in there. You have to go through a gate. It's gated access. Nobody else is allowed on that road unless you're a corporate and have a radio or a permit to be on it. And this is supply a huge project for the uh, Dominica transmission project, some kind of huge grid up in the Stewart area. Somehow to supply, is it for industry somewhere there or is it industry for Alaska? I can't remember how it works. Uh, there's a big project there for, there's big things at Stewart and then the NAS. And anyways, there's all kinds of empty ghost towns there that I want it going to wind up populated because people are going to need a place to live when the U.S. becomes uninhabitable. Mike, shut up and play some music. But this is the problem with being both a seer and I, Apollo gave me great gifts, the ability to see, the ability to understand, the ability to say things that nobody would believe. So why not, why not say them if people aren't going to believe them anyway, I figure. But also because I've been told that the things that you have that you've been given, you must give and give away for free. And that's why, it's a poor, that's why I'm a poor man and government assistance, because I gave away my life for free. And now I need to go and say, well, I need some benefaction. So there will be a Patreon started once I get the time to sit down and write and know what to say in it. I really just... This is one of the, these little clips I'm going to make. But what I do is both everything, history, geography, archaeology, astronomy, politics, you know, it's all the same thing to me. Language is all the same thing. So I'm just an old guy who wants to have a dignified living and be able to go to the great places that he wants to go back to and play music for the gods. And in the meantime, I'm sharing my wisdom. wisdom. I don't have any wisdom. I just have knowledge of what I see, you know, the clarity that I see things with events like what's going on in France or what was going on with the Hiawatha Comet. They're all the same thing to me. They're just events that I understand. I assimilate all the data from and have an opinion on. I call myself, when I'm not a musician, I call myself the young professor. Skook him on, big skook. Why am I in Michael China? Michael Wan, I don't know. Western Oracle. Actually, I just haven't sung that song in a long time. I'm going to play one quickie and then I'm sitting down. I realize I need another joint to play something decent, so I'm going to stop. So, uh, what do I want to play?
party doll that I just can't sing it. I don't have the energy. Uh, have to be more dancing and live. But I got some poetry out, didn't I? Yeah, I should be happy. I just put it down and stop being a glutton and don't waste bait every time on being ineffective. So that was a pretty nice little session. A little bit too much politics, maybe. I've got to learn to cut all these up before I upload them and add maps and stuff when I start talking about stuff. But that was a worthy little bit of session, a very short one anyway. Well, good night.